In this video, we'll be talking about the Civil War vocabulary words that you need to know. Our first word is abolitionist. An abolitionist is a person who helped the movement to end slavery. Most of the abolitionists will be found in the north, but you will have some abolitionists in the south as well. The next word is blockade. A blockade is uh, it means to use navy vessels to prevent shipment of food and supplies in or out of ports. In the Civil War, we had Scott's Great Snake, which was basically the north uh, blockade of all the ports so the southern uh, states could not get any of their supplies that they needed in and use against the north. Next, we have campaign in the form of a military uh, operation. So we're not talking about a campaign like for presidency or anything like that. We're talking specifically for a military operation. Next word we have is casualty. A casualty is a soldier who is killed, wounded, captured, or missing uh, based on war. So if you're a casualty of war, uh, you're wounded, you can't fight anymore, or you were killed, or you're missing, or captured. The next word we have is confederacy. Confederacy, uh, in the terms of the Civil War, is going to be talking about the southern states. Uh, they came together to form the Confederate States of America. But the actual definition of confederacy is a union of different groups. Uh, so these states in the south are going to come together and form a confederacy. Uh, so the different group is going to be their different state. Uh, so that's how it applies here for us. The next word we have is cons conscription. Uh, this is to force uh, enrollment of people into military service. So if you've ever heard anybody talk about the draft in World War II, um, that's an example of, of a cons conscription. Excuse me. Um, so this is basically just people don't voluntarily go into the war. Uh, they don't necessarily want to, uh, but the government tells them, hey, you're going to come into the war and you're going to help us fight. Next word we have is ordinance. Uh, this is a local law uh, or piece of legislation, let's just say, or not of. Uh, and so basically, you have a city ordinance. Uh, you may see signs that come in as you're coming into like a small town that says no engine brake by city ordinance. Uh, or an example here, no smoking by city ordinance. Um, that's just basically telling you like, hey, this city or this town or wherever you are has passed in a, a law um, that's prohibiting whatever you're doing or uh, pretty much tells you exactly what you can and can't do. So it's just a local law. Next we have secede, um, which is to withdraw from a larger unit uh, that you belong to. So in the terms of the Civil War, we're talking about the South seceding from the Union or seceding from the United States. So uh, the South is going to basically leave the United States and like we talked about earlier, create the Confederate States of America. And uh, basically when they did that, they were seceding from the Union. Um, so they were kind of in violation of the Constitution, um, but they didn't really mind. Next we have is sectionalism. So sectionalism is uh, the focus of interest on one's region. So some people may say that I'm a, I am a sectionalist um, because I'm a Texan, right? I am from the United States, but when people ask me where I'm from, I say Texas. Um, that may be a sectionalist uh, viewpoint, but it is how I answer. Um, so we had a lot of sectionalism in the in the Civil War. Uh, people are either identified from the South or from the North, and we we get this because of the differences in the economies and everything like that, which we'll talk about as we get into the unit. But understand that. Uh, at this time, there wasn't like, hey, I'm from the United States. We're all one. We're all together. Um, they had basically broke up into two groups, and uh, that's how they identified two people and to one another, and that's going to drive. Um, it's going to be one of our causes of the Civil War.
Next word is sovereign. Um, so you may hear this word when we talk about popular sovereignty. Um, so you may be familiar a little bit with this one. But a sovereign is to be to be sovereign is to be free from outside control or self-governing. Um, so the United States is a sovereign nation, which means that we govern ourselves in the United States. We don't have like somebody else uh, looking over our shoulder or making our laws or anything like that. Um, so if you think about uh, the United States when it was first becoming, uh, before even independence from Great Britain, it was not a sovereign nation because Great Britain was making the laws for this area, for the 13 colonies. Um, when Texas was with Mexico, it was not a sovereign state. Uh, Mexico was still making the laws. Now, Texas did have some say in the laws that they made, but uh, most of the time the, the national laws were being made by the Mexican government. And then we have the Anaconda Plan. So we talked about the uh, blockade and basically the Anaconda Plan is just a big blockade um, kind of swooping in and, and crippling the South that the Union used. Um, so it's a Union's plan to cut off supplies and trade uh, to the Confederacy to defeat them. And we'll get into more of it when we get into the unit, but basically um, they wanted to start at the capital of the Confederacy and then work all the way down with the Navy, um, closing off all the ports and entries to the south, such as the Mississippi River and stuff like that. Um, and that was going to suffocate the, uh, the south, much like an anaconda would its prey, you know, kind of squeeze it to death and basically uh, end up that plan ends up winning the uh, North, the the Civil War. Then we have a Unionist. Uh, this is a person who supported the Union cause during the Civil War. So these are people from the North. Uh, not, not, not always from the North. Um, you did have some Unionists from the South. But most of the time you'll find a Unionist in the North. Um, these are the people that uh, kind of believe that the United States was supposed to be together, you know, the Confederacy should not have split up, things like that. Um, so these people are going to, you know, support the Union and even fight for the Union in the Civil War. And that'll do it. Um, I appreciate y'all watching. Hopefully you gained something out of it. If you need anything from us, do let us know. We're here to help. Stay on top of your assignments, and we'll see you in the next one.